to Logic Made Accessible. Today we go deeper in our exploration of terms. A helpful method of understanding categorigmatic terms is the use of concepts of extension and intention. To review once again, a categorigmatic term is a term that refers to a category. A category is just a collection of particular things that share some relevant common property or properties. This common property is referred to by the categorigmatic term itself. For instance, the term chairs picks out the category chairs, which is just a collection of all the things in existence that have the property of being a chair. All of the chairs are members of the category chairs. To be specific, chair and chairs are the same category. They have all things in reality that are chairs as members. Now we can understand the following definitions. Extension of a categorigmatic term is the totality of all particular members of the category that the term refers to. The intention of a categorigmatic term is the meaning and the definition of the term. The description of the common property or properties that all members of the extension of the term share. It's worth noting that the intention of a term can also be thought of as its definition. We can use the two terms interchangeably. Let's use an example to more easily understand these ideas. Let's say that we have the term triangle. The intention or definition of the term triangle is a three-sided polygon. The extension of the term triangle, then, is the totality of things in reality that have the common properties of being both 1, three-sided, and 2, a polygon, straight sides, closed, and planar. If there is something that is both three-sided and a polygon, then it is in the extension of triangle. In other words, such a thing is a member of the category triangle, since it has both of the common properties that define such a category. It is important to note that define comes from the Latin de infinire, or to bound or limit completely. So what defines the limit of a category? The definition slash intention of the term that refers to it. And what things are in such a category? Only those things that have the common property or properties that a term's intention defines of them. Here's a picture to help visualize this. As we can see, when we use the term triangle, we refer to a category that contains the totality of things we call triangle. This totality is the extension of the term triangle. What objects are in this extension is defined by the intention of triangle given. These are the common properties held by things inside the category, but are not held by anything outside the category. In other words, everything inside the circle, or everything in the extension of the term, one has three sides, and two is a polygon. Everything outside of the circle either does not have three sides, is not a polygon, or is neither a polygon nor three-sided. It is important to note that these two concepts are, in a way, inversely related. As the extension of a term increases, the term's definition must cover a wider range of things. Its intention becomes less specific. Similarly, as the extension of a term decreases, the term's definition covers a narrow range of things. Its intention becomes more specific. As a general rule, the greater number of things to which a term refers, the less specific in meaning it must be. For instance, consider an obtuse triangle. Obtuse triangle is a more specific term than triangle, it not only is a three-sided polygon, but it also has a larger angle than 90 degrees. Thus, the intention has become more specific than that of a simple triangle. In other words, things must have more properties to be in the category of two's triangle. However, because the meaning of the term has become more specific, the collection of things that the term refers to in the world decreases. This general relation holds for almost all terms. We now have this. Notice that the category has become much smaller because that which is limiting it, the intention, is more specific. There are now triangles outside of the category because they are not obtuse triangles. Intention is very important because it plays a crucial role in our definitions. When we define something, we want to choose a definition that is as specific as possible to fit the intuitive extension we associate with the term. Why is this the case? Take the triangle example again. If we were to define triangle with a definition that is broader than the generally accepted intention of triangle, then we would have non-triangles in the category of triangle. For instance, if we define triangle as a geometric shape, then squares would be members of the category triangle because squares have the property of being geometric shapes. This diagram shows that our definition slash intention is way too broad because now squares, stars, and trapezoids are in the category triangle. Therefore, we know that we need to make our definition or intention more specific. Since our goal in argumentation is to avoid as much vagueness and ambiguity as possible, we want to make sure that our definitions include only the objects we are talking about. Of course, we also don't want our definition to be too specific either. We would like all and only triangles inside of the category triangle. Here are some examples where you can see intention and extension at play. First, take the term human. There are many ways to define what it means to be human, but perhaps you agree with Aristotle and define human as a rational animal. This is the intention of the term. The extension of the term is the totality of the rational animals, humans, 
which exists in reality. We see that we may have made our definition too broad and that there exist other rational animals besides humans. Let's, however, accept the idea that a rational animal is a good definition for human. Let's make the term more specific and see what happens to the extension and intention of the term. Perhaps we choose to specify by using the term female human. Now the intention of the term increases in terms of specificity, since the new meaning of the term is a female rational animal. Conversely, the extension decreases since the number of female humans in reality is fewer than the number of total humans. Although justice is notoriously difficult to define, let's say that we accept the definition, justice is the interest of the stronger. This is the definition that was put forth by Thrasymachus, an interlocutor in Plato's foundational work of political philosophy, The Republic. Even though this is an abstract term, we can see that the same inverse principles between extension and intention applies. For instance, we can modify Thrasymachus's definition to say that justice is the interest of both the stronger and the weaker at the same time. We can intuitively see that this new definition would occur fewer times in the world, a smaller extension, because there are few instances in which both the stronger and the weaker benefit. The notions of extension and intention are incredibly important because they help us make sure that we define categorigmatic terms correctly in any given circumstance. In an argument, it is crucial that we understand intention and extension so that our terms are clear and unambiguous. When we evaluate arguments, it's important to examine all the terms that are being used and make sure that such terms are defined correctly. If terms are given a definition that is too broad or too narrow, it is easy to see that an absurd conclusion could follow. After all, since syllogisms are composed of propositions, and propositions are composed of terms, if the terms are faulty, then the entire argument could easily go wrong. Now that we know how terms relate to categories, we can begin relating categories themselves and propositions. See you next time.